Jesus' name, we welcome you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. How many here are excited and blessed to be in the house of God? In Jesus' mighty name, we're so excited and ecstatic. Give a big round of applause one last time. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, glory to God. For those that couldn't, for those that couldn't join us, uh, we welcome you. Those on the Facebook and YouTube, we welcome you guys in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm Pastor Samuel Rodriguez. It's a pleasure and honor to be in the house of God. I don't take my calling lightly. Someone shout amen. And, uh, and if, if, if you weren't here, then there wouldn't be no Pastor Sam. Someone shout amen, hallelujah. And I bless your life, amen, but thank God that every pastor needs somebody to listen, ha, ha, somebody to listen to them, someone shout amen. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, so I welcome you in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Uh, 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 we're in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, I see a couple new faces, you're welcome, you're welcome, hallelujah, you are most welcome here into the family, in the mighty name of Jesus, I you know who you are, amen. Church, don't look around, don't make them feel, hallelujah, just bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. We welcome you guys in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. I'm so blessed to see uh, 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 when, when God starts bringing in the family, someone shout amen. When he starts bringing in the families, I'm so blessed. Why? Because that's God's faithfulness. Someone shout amen. That's God's faithfulness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When God starts bringing in the families, when he starts answering prayer petitions that we've been asking for in Jesus' mighty name, he's faithful in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, tell your neighbor, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit in this week. Be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit in this week. Uh, 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 there's a scripture that says, don't quench the spirit of God. Someone shout amen. Nicodemus, hallelujah, asked Jesus, how, uh, 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 how do we make it to heaven? Jesus says, you must be born again. Someone shout amen. Born of water and born of the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone shout amen. The minute that you and I accepted Jesus Christ as our only Lord and Savior, you and I have been born again, born by the Spirit, someone shout amen. The Bible says it's the life-giving Spirit that lives in us, someone shout amen. Are y'all with me, hallelujah? Tell your neighbor, that Spirit gives us life. That Spirit gives us life, hallelujah. Check yourself, if you got life running in the mighty name of Jesus. If you do, then the Holy Spirit is working, someone shout amen. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 21. We're going to read all the way to verse 9 in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to preach the word of God, then I'm going to bless you, and you guys can go and hang out and do some good stuff with the family. Someone shout amen. Remember, if you guys know me, hallelujah, if you shout amen, I preach faster. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me, hallelujah? If you shout the house down, that's a sign, amen, hallelujah, uh, uh, for me to get going and hurry up in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone shout amen, hallelujah. For those that don't know the schedule, I mean, you guys can follow us on the House of Prayer Instagram, hallelujah, House of Prayer Fellowship, La Habra. Uh, that's where we have all of our news coming out of what God is doing in Jesus' name. For those that don't know, we have an awesome uh, discipleship class, and we also have an awesome women's study. Someone shout amen. All the women, I encourage you to get connected with Minister Michelle. She's right here in the front in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. We also have a great men's group. Amen. Back there, you see the man of God walking around, Minister Enrique. Hallelujah. All the men get connected with him in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. But we have a lot going on. Amen. And, and, and we would love to have you guys here to grow in the things of God in Jesus' mighty name. How many are with me? Matthew chapter 21, verse 1. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Word of God says this. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, on the mountain of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, verse 2, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you. Someone shout amen. What did Jesus say? He says, go to the village ahead of you. And that once you will find a donkey tied there. Someone shout amen. What are you going to find? Hallelujah. A donkey that is what? That is tied there in the mighty name of Jesus. A donkey that is what? That is tied. When you're tied down, amen, you can't move. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? When you're tied down, hallelujah, you can't go out and see new things in the mighty name of Jesus. You're stuck seeing the same situation. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? I don't know if any of you guys ever felt like, man, things uh, aren't moving. I feel like I'm chained down. Someone shout amen. Have you ever felt like that? Someone shout amen. 
I feel like I'm tied down. I feel like it's the same thing. I feel like I'm not seeing any movement. I feel like my marriage is the same. I feel like my finances are the same. I feel like there's nothing changing. Everything I tune into on CNN, MSNBC is all allegations, is all false. I turn on my TV and there's another attack in Moscow and another attack in Haiti. Hallelujah. And things are falling all around us in the mighty name of Jesus. I feel like I'm tied down. Someone shout amen. Am I speaking to somebody? And it says here, hallelujah. It says there, you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Jesus says, untie them. Someone shout amen. What did Jesus say? Untie them. What did Jesus say? He he don't want you to be tied. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? And tie them and bring them to me. Someone shout amen. Verse 3. If anyone says anything to you, Say that the Lord needs them. Someone shout amen. Amen. If anyone says anything to you, say that the what? The Lord needs needs them. Other translation is the Lord is in need of them. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? I'm, I'm trying to build this up. Someone shout amen. And it says he will send them right away. Are y'all with me? Verse four. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Verse five. It says, say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to who? Your king comes to you, someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Gentle and riding on a donkey. And on the colt, hallelujah, the foal of a donkey, hallelujah. Verse 6, I thank the Lord that my king comes to me, someone shout amen. Verse 6, hallelujah, somebody caught that in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 6, the disciples went and hallelujah, underline this, they did As Jesus had instructed them. Someone shout amen. They did as who? They did as Jesus had instructed them. Someone shout amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I I don't I don't follow instructions. Hallelujah. I'm on my my, my seventh husband. I don't follow no no instructions. Hallelujah. No, no, don't tell me what to do, God. Someone shout amen. Lord have mercy. So we gonna we all right, y'all ain't gotta say nothing in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 7. It says, they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. Hallelujah. Verse 8, hallelujah. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches or palms, hallelujah, from the trees and spread them on the road. Someone shout amen. The crowds, hallelujah, that went ahead, hallelujah, of him and those who followed shouted, Hosanna. To the son of David, someone shout amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. Hosanna, hallelujah. They declared, save us in other translations of what Hosanna means. Save us now, hallelujah. Save us from the bondages of sin. Save us from being tied down in one place in Jesus' mighty name. Save us because we're in pain. Save us because we're in agony. Save us because we're tired. Save us because we need a fresh drink of your living water. Hallelujah. Save us because I'm tired of how my life turned out in Jesus' name. Save us because I'm drowning in my own troubles and sorrow and anxiety. Save us, Hosanna. Hallelujah. I'm tired of being tied down. I'm tired of being broken. I'm tired of not moving. Hallelujah. I'm tired of not living my life from glory to glory and going from pain to pain. Hosanna. Save Save us. Someone shout amen. And Jesus, hallelujah, understanding and knowing the sensitivity of the week that he was in, hallelujah, that he's one week, seven days, hallelujah, until Passover, hallelujah, until when he resurrects in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And he says, before I go, hallelujah, and die and resurrect, I need to untie some people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. He says, before I finish what I need God, hallelujah, and what God commands of me, I need to untie some people 
I need to get some strongholds out of people. In the mighty name of, I need to change some people's lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. One thing that Jesus says, he tells his disciples, I want you to go find a donkey. But I don't just want any regular donkey. I want it, I want it to be the one that is tied. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to use the donkey, the one, hallelujah, who are having life pass them by and having people pass them by and having things pass them by and not being able to flex and not being able to spread their wings. I want that donkey in the mighty name of Jesus. I want those people who are hurting. I want those people who are broken. I want those people who need a miracle. I want those women who are asking for a miracle in their marriage with their husband. I'm asking for those who are asking for a miracle with their wives and their family. I'm asking those who are looking for a miracle with their children and their grandchildren in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't want you to get any regular donkey. I need you to get the one that's tied. Someone shout amen. I thank the Lord, hallelujah. I thank the Lord, amen, hallelujah, that when things seem tight in my life, that when things seem difficult in my life, when I don't want to worship him, when I don't want to praise him, when I don't want to be faithful to him, when I don't want to pray to him, he sends somebody to come and get me. He sends somebody to come and rescue me. He sends a pastor with the right word. He sends the evangelist with the right word. He says, because I need to untie the one that's bound in Jesus' mighty name. Someone shout amen. I need to untie the one that's bound. I need to release them from their misery in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that when Jesus found the Samaritan woman, he says, do you want this gift, this water, hallelujah, and this life-giving water, you will never be thirsty again. He says, I offer it to you because I've seen that you're tied. I've seen that you're going from man to man. I see that you go from bed to bed. I see that you go from house to house. And I see that on the inside of you, you need a fresh touch of God's spirit. You need a fresh touch of God's love. You need a fresh touch of God's anointing. Someone shout amen. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 9, he says he saw the crowds. And he had compassion on them. Someone shout amen. He said they were hopeless without a shepherd. Sick and broken. And you had compassion on them in the mighty name of Jesus. What does Palm Sunday mean? It shows us the compassion of Jesus Christ has towards us. The love, hallelujah, that he has for us in the mighty name of Jesus. That though, hallelujah, the same people who are announcing and declaring Hosanna are the same ones that are going to be yelling out, crucify him. But he doesn't care, hallelujah. He's willing to pay the price, hallelujah. He's willing to finish what God the Father, hallelujah, has commanded him to finish. Why? Because he has compassion on you and I. Someone shout amen. One thing that I've learned is that men and women are only compassionate to a certain level. Someone shout amen. You know how I know that amen? Because somebody in your family who's your own flesh and blood can be going through something difficult. They lose their home. And you say, yes, I'll help them. Someone shout amen. But then after a month, hallelujah, you see that they're eating up all your food in the fridge. You see that they're leaving all their clothes, hallelujah, in the restrooms. And now your wife and your husband are telling you, when are you going to get them out of here in Jesus' mighty name? And now you're kind of make, throwing little signs and tell them, hey, I saw this new apartment on Craigslist. You go check it out. Someone shout amen. And people are compassionate. People are kind to a certain level in the mighty name of Jesus. But you and I serve a God, hallelujah, that when people, hallelujah, aren't compassionate, he extends his hand of mercy. He extends his hand of love and grace upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. And he says, I want you to go untie the thing that is tied down in Jesus' mighty name. You ought to get excited in the mighty name of Jesus because God's not worried about those who are walking around. He's worried about those who are tied down, that there's no movement in their life, that need the fresh touch of God's spirit in your life. I don't know about you, but I've come this Sunday morning in need of a fresh touch of God's spirit, in need of God to tell me to come out of that season. God tell me to come out of that valley. God tell me to come out of that pine. In the mighty name of Jesus, someone shout amen. Point number one. 
untied from darkness. Someone shout amen. Untied from darkness. And you'll see in the book of Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, 8 to 10 in Jesus' name. Untied from darkness. The Bible says, this is what the Lord says, in the time of my favor, I will answer you. And in the day of salvation, I will help you. I will keep you and make you to be covenant for my people, to restore the land and to reassign its desolate inheritance, to say to the captives, come out, and to those who are in darkness to be free in Jesus' mighty name. This is a prophetic word in the book of Isaiah where God says those who are in a dry season, those who are in dry places, those who are in a famine, those who are in a desolate place in Jesus' mighty name, he says that's the one I want to call. The one, hallelujah, who's in darkness. The one that can't see. The one that's in doubt and in fear in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says this, church, hallelujah, that when Jesus resurrected, hallelujah, it says the people went back into their homes and they were scared of what the Pharisees were going to do, hallelujah. And sometimes we hide in darkness because we don't want, hallelujah, people to come and find us. We don't want collections to call us. We're scared of the things that might happen, hallelujah. But I serve a God, hallelujah, that tells you to come out of that darkness. He tells you, come out and be free. He tells you, I'm turning those dry places into a waterbed in the mighty name of Jesus. I need you to untie that donkey because that's the one I want to use. But you know what I've noticed, church? There are people who love to be in the darkness. Someone shout amen. I'll say that again. There are people who love to be in their misery. Someone shout amen. There are people who might be sitting here or on the Facebook live that are telling yourself, I don't want to come out of darkness. I want to be tied up. Because if I'm not tied up, hallelujah, then no one's going to listen to me. No one's going to feel sorry for me in the mighty name of Jesus. No one's going to take the time to hear me out in Jesus' name. Listen to me, hallelujah. What did Jesus say to the man who was sitting by the, the, the waterbed, who was paralyzed all those years? He asked him, do you want to get well? Someone shout amen. He asked him, before I do this miracle, do you want to get well in the mighty name of Jesus? And the man says, it's because every time the angel come to touch the waters, someone else comes before me and I can't have my miracle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And there are some people, hallelujah, who God sends messengers. God sends a pastor. God sends a woman's study. God sends a men's study to say, come out of that darkness. Come out and be untied. Come out and be free in the mighty name of Jesus. But one thing you have to ask yourself, do you want to be free from unforgiveness? Do you want to be free from bitterness? Do you want to be free from anger? Do you want to be free from poverty? Do you want to be free from the past? Do you want to be free from traumas? Do you want to be free of what people have done to you? Do you want to be free about what she's done to you? Do you want to be free about what he's done to you? God offers salvation. Jesus says, come out of the darkness. Someone shout amen. Six, seven years running away from God. Someone shout amen. You know what the world has to offer. I remember, hallelujah, I would go and work and make money. That money, hallelujah, wasn't good enough for me, hallelujah. So I'd go dancing, hallelujah. And it went from two nights to three nights to seven nights a week. And that wouldn't do it for me, hallelujah. And I would go on and have breakfasts and lunches and get a group of 20, 30 friends. And that still didn't do it for me. And when nothing did it for me, I said, I got to travel. Surely I got to go hiking. Surely I got to go see this. Surely I got to get to Miami. Surely I got to get to Vegas. But none of that ever did nothing for me. None of it did. Six years in darkness. Six years consumed in sin. Six years living my life how I wanted to live it in the mighty name of Jesus. And it got to a point, hallelujah, where I said everything I'm trying to do, but I still feel like I'm in the same place. Someone shout amen. 
And there are people who come to church, hallelujah, who you can see, hallelujah, though they're good at disguising it, hallelujah, you can see that they're stuck in that same prayer life. They're stuck in that same word of God life. They're stuck with that same attitude in the mighty name of Jesus. And only until you come to Jesus, only until you say, Jesus, untie me, Holy Spirit, fill me. I can't continue to live my Christian life like this. I need to be untied from this darkness in my life. Just because we come to church doesn't mean we're all untied in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone shout amen. Are you all with me? And he says, hallelujah, Isaiah 49, 8. They will not have their hunger, no thirst, nor the desert of heat or the sun will beat down on them. He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside the springs of water. Someone shout amen. You want to know why? Listen to me now. You want to know why Jesus said, I need you to get a donkey that's tied? Someone shout amen. Because there comes a point in your life where you've been doing the same thing, same thing, same thing. You've tried to dig yourself out of problems and you dig yourself in. Same thing, same thing. Someone shout amen. And it comes to a point where you say, you want to know what, Lord? I'm done. I surrender. That's it. I'm done. I surrender. I talked about this on Wednesday for a midweek service. That Jesus, hallelujah, only showed up to Martha and Mary's until Lazarus was pronounced dead. Someone shout amen. Do you want to know why, hallelujah? Sometimes we have to get to a point where nothing is working out and we're tied up in the mighty name of Jesus because until God gets you to that place, you won't be obedient to follow his instructions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He says, I want the one that's tied down because the one that's tied down is tired. The one that's tied down sees that they need help. The one that's tied down is the one that's willing to take a step of faith. Hallelujah. To say, Jesus, wherever you go, I will go in the mighty name of Jesus wherever you call I'm willing to go in Jesus mighty name I'm speaking to people who have been tied down I'm speaking to people who have been broken I'm speaking to people who have been tired I'm speaking to people hallelujah who everybody has passed them by life has passed them by but Jesus says now I free you come and follow me someone shout amen you want to know why I took the word of God and the things of God so serious because all of my life, listen to me, no one can tell me what to do. I was one of those hard-headed, I was one of those prideful, jacked-up jokers. Listen, hallelujah. My mother couldn't tell me what to do. My father couldn't tell me what to do. Mother Alegria couldn't tell me what to do. God had to allow me to get to a place to say, I'm tied down. I'm broken. I want out of this darkness. Father, now I'm ready to do what you have called me to do in the mighty name of Jesus. I no longer want to live life the way I want to live it. I need you to guide my every step. And listen, the Bible says, they will neither hunger nor nor will the desert of the heat of the land will be down on them. He says, hallelujah, he will lead you to springs of water. Listen, listen, everything, everything that I ever wanted in my heart, I know I'm speaking to somebody, everything I ever wanted in my, in my life, I try to achieve it myself. I would go from broken relationship to broken relationship. Someone shout amen. I would have good women in my life. And I wouldn't know, hallelujah, how to treat them and not lose them. And I'd go from broken heart of relationship to broken heart of relationship. Listen, I'm a pastor's kid. I grew up in a pastoral home. I would see the love. I would see the love in my home. I would see my mother and my father. I would see my family, hallelujah. And all of my life, I desire to have a good wife. I desire 
to have a good family. I desire to have peace in my home. I desire to have rest in my home. And I tried in the world to achieve it, but I could never do it in the mighty name of Jesus until I said, Jesus, I need you to lead me. Jesus, I need you to take control. Jesus, I need you to untie me. Jesus, I need you to break this depression off of me. I need you to break these chains off of me. Lead me. Someone shout amen. Can you imagine? Listen. The Bible says, listen to me now. This is where us church folk, this is where we come in. Listen to me now. Jesus tells the disciples, go and find a donkey that's tied. Someone shout amen. And he said, if they tell you anything, say that the Lord is in need of them, correct? You want to know why the church and the devil wants us sitting here in the church? You want to know why he don't want us passing out flyers? You want to know why he don't want us doing food distribution every Saturday? You want to know why the devil wants you working from 9 to 5 plus overtime in the mighty name of Jesus? Do you want to know why? Because he knows the same way Jesus sent his two disciples. And the Bible says they did what he had instructed them. That was how they found the donkey. That was how they found the thing that was tied. And they untied it in Jesus' mighty name. The reason why the church of America, the reason why we haven't seen breakthrough in our families, the reason why we haven't seen breakthrough with our children, the reason why we haven't seen breakthrough and revival in the mighty name of Jesus is because Jesus is telling us to go. Ah, I'm preaching this morning. Someone shout amen. Jesus is telling us to go in Jesus' mighty name. Someone shout amen. Can you imagine, church, look all around you. When I first started my ministry, I only had one or two people. And what I did was, Lord, hallelujah, bring the souls. God says, go out and get them in Jesus' mighty name. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Someone shout amen. There are people that can sit down and have a breakfast, a lunch, and dinner, hallelujah. But when it comes to hallelujah, let's have a prayer service. You won't find anybody here. We can go out for coffee, but don't tell me to go pass out flyers, hallelujah. But I want God to save my family, and God is trying to send you to save other families, to save other children, to save other men and women of God, because what you sow, you're going to reap. Ah. But we're, we're on our sofa bed. Hey, babe. Someone shout amen. And Jesus says, go. He says, go. Someone shout amen. He says, go. Someone give a big round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Point number two. How many here are being blessed? He will lead you to the land flowing with milk and honey. Someone shout amen. He says he will lead you. Hallelujah. He will lead you. Hallelujah. To the land flowing. With milk and honey, someone shout amen. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 and 10, it says, The Lord says, I have indeed seen the misery. I have what? I have what? Seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. I am concerned about their suffering. Someone shout amen. You know what I love about Jesus? You know what I love about God? Is that when no one else is listening, God is. Someone shout amen. That when no one else is listening to you, God is concerned about our suffering. Someone shout amen. You don't think the God that you and I serve is concerned seeing the situation that you're in? Someone shout amen. You don't think he sees what you need? You don't think he sees and he hears a cry in your heart? Someone shout amen. Listen. The problem with the church is we stop believing. Is we stop believing in the promises of God. Someone shout amen. Do you want to know how I know that we stop believing? Because our attitudes change. Our commitment and our integrity of the things of God 
changes. We no longer have integrity. We no longer have fear or reverence before the Lord. Someone shout amen. And the Bible says that the Lord heard the cry and the suffering of his people. Someone shout amen. You don't think, hallelujah, that's okay, that's okay, mama, that's okay, let the baby, that's okay. We're here. Well, thank God, give around a pause for the baby. Someone shout amen. <laughs> Jesus, please come. Let him come. Let him come. I'll be, I'll be worried when we don't have any babies running around. Someone shout amen. Tired neighbor, if a baby can distract you, hallelujah, we need to check, examine the inside. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me, hallelujah? Give a big round of applause in the mighty name. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it. They're rejoicing. They feel the spirit of God. Someone shout amen. Some of you are stiff as a, as a fish out of water. I want the babies to be moving in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious, hallelujah, uh, land. It is a land flowing of milk and honey and the land where the Canaanites, Hinnanites, hallelujah, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. And now the cry of Israelites have reached me and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. Now what? I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt, someone shout amen. The Lord is in need of you, someone shout amen. The Lord is there to guide you. The Lord is here who listens to the suffering that's on the inside of you in Jesus' name. Jesus says, I want you to untie that donkey. Listen, I don't know what's the thing that you feel that has made you tied down. Jesus wants to break that. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I serve a God that can break every chain. In the mighty name of Jesus. I serve a God that's a way maker. That makes a way in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. You ought to get excited. Hallelujah. Because you might have come in here bound. You might have come in here hurt. You might have come in here broken. But I know a Jesus that says come out. Hallelujah. I've heard the cry. I've heard the suffering. Now it's time to be free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do you want to get well? Someone shout amen. Do you want to get well? And when he says yes, the Bible says that Jesus says, get up and pick up your mat. Someone shout amen. You want to know why God says pick up your mat? Someone shout amen. He says get up and pick up. You want to know why? Because if you leave that mat there, the thought will be in the back of your mind. I can always go back to that mat. Someone shout amen. And this is why here this Sunday morning, the thing that has you tied, the thing that has you in pain, the thing that has you hurting on the inside, you got to pick up that mat and take it to the cross of Calvary. You can no longer go back to your attitude. You can no longer go back to your unforgiveness. You can no longer go back to your bitterness in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that the people asked, hallelujah, for water. The water was bitter. And the Lord told Moses, tell them to get that wood and throw it in the water. And that wood, signifying the cross of Calvary, will turn that bitter water into sweet water in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, only Jesus here this morning can untie you can break you free from the thing that has you in bondage and pain, hurting and broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone shout amen. He says, come out and untie them. He tells Moses, I want you to go and I want you to set the captives free in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Moses says, send somebody else. And he says, no, I've sent you. Do you want to know why? Because we always want everybody else to do the work but ourselves. Someone shout amen. We want the pastor and everybody else to pray for you when you're in need. But she won't set time out of the day, 30 minutes, 50 minutes, 5 minutes, to say hallelujah. Children, I've given you your Egos, Legos, waffles, hallelujah. Get to the, I got to go pray and seek God's face in Jesus' mighty name. Husband, I've made you breakfast, hallelujah. Teach I own as you like them in the mighty name of Jesus. But I got to spend 30 minutes in the presence of God because I want to be free from what I'm carrying. 
Someone shout amen. And Moses says, tell my brother to go. And God says, no, I want you to go. Someone shout amen. Can you imagine if Jesus, our Savior, the one who endured all that pain, all those broken ribs, all that blood, hallelujah, that was shed. Imagine if he said, can you just send somebody else, God, to do it? Someone shout amen. And that wasn't even the worst part. You want to know what the worst part was? When Jesus is on the cross, my God, I'm not going to preach on this, but so much. He says, Father, where have you gone? Why have you forsaken me? Someone shout amen. And the reason why, because at that very moment, he was carrying the weight of, 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 uh, of the world's sin on his shoulders. He was carrying your sin. He was carrying my sin. But he still made a decision to finish. Why? Because of his love for you and I. Because of his grace for you and I. This is why you ought to praise him. This is why you ought to worship him. Because he sets us free. Because he has compassion and love over our life in the mighty name of Jesus. This is why I'm radical for Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm just... I'm very, I'm a dignified saint. I'm just a, my God, where have we gone to in the church? So much out, amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Don't talk to me, sister. Hallelujah. I can't even see you. Don't talk to me, brother. Hallelujah. are being blessed this morning. Give a big round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Point number three. God will show up at the right time. Someone shout amen. God will show up at the right time in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says, hallelujah. He says, your king has come to you. Someone shout amen. Blessed is the name of the Lord, for your king has come. It says, verse 5, it says, so your king comes to you gentle, riding on a donkey. Someone shout amen. I thank the Lord that I've learned that God shows up at the right time in my life. He pours out his spirit at the right time in my life. He gives me the word just how I need it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I remember, church, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Early in my ministry, I was very hard on my father's ministry. I was very judgmental. Very judgmental. And I'll be honest with you, hallelujah. I felt like everything they did was out of order. Someone shout amen. And, and for so many years, all I did was pass judgment. All I did was have resentment. All I did was have anger because I felt at that time that, that, that we... Uh, 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 the reason why we're not as big as we should be or, uh, 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 or have as much blessed that we have is because we could do things a better way. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? And I would come into church. You know what attitude was in church? Like a lot of attitudes, not here. Yes, here and in Facebook. Hmm. Let me, let me, let me scan around the room. Hmm. Uh, worship, they missed, they, they, they missed, that wasn't my song. I like the YouTube song better. Hmm. Oh, uh, pastor preach. I, I, I like how, how Bishop so-and-so preaches in the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm. Someone shout amen. Uh, I'm not going to get here early and pray, hallelujah, because no one else does it, so why do I got to worry about it? Someone shout amen. I was like that for five years. Five years angry and bitter. No relationship with my father, my pastor, Hallelujah. Because I felt like I knew it all and I knew exactly what had to be done. Someone shout amen. Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. And one day, I remember we used to have service on a Sunday night. And in the Sunday night service, only about two, three people showed up. Someone shout amen. And at that time, only uh, uh, Pastor Tony, on, on the, he only had the guitar. And one day I walked in and I said, Lord, I'm tired of feeling this way. I said, Lord, I'm tired of being bitter. I'm tired, hallelujah, of examining everybody in the room instead of myself. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of waking up, hallelujah, without excitement with coming to church service on Sunday. 
I'm tired, hallelujah, of not being excited to come and to worship the Lord on the Wednesday midweek service, on the Thursday service. I'm tired of living like this. Someone shout amen. And one day, hallelujah, I came in to that Sunday evening service. Only two, three people in the church. Only Tony playing, playing the guitar. And I remember, hallelujah, they started singing the song, Levanto mis manos, aunque no tenga fuerza, levanto mis manos, aunque tenga mil problemas. Cuando levanto mis manos, mis cargas se van. Una nueva unción. Da, 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 da. Todo esto es posible. Todo esto es posible. Cuando levanto mis manos. And my mother was singing that song. And they were all off beat. But I remember, hallelujah, right there. And then I said, Lord, I'm tired of being tied up. I'm tired of not having joy when I come to church. I'm tired of pointing the fingers in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm tired, hallelujah, of having ha uh, people, hallelujah, whether they're faithful or not faithful, dictate my connection, my word. I need to be free. I want to be free. And I remember right there, and I lifted up my hands. Todo esto es posible. Todo esto es posible. And I said, Lord, I want to be free from this. You are my Hosanna. You are the one that saves me. I need you to guide me every step of the way. I want to be excited when I wake up every morning. I want to feel your presence. I want to be in your word. I want to move from glory to glory. I want revelation in my life. I want joy in my marriage. I want joy with my wife. I want joy with my husband. I don't want to be poverty. I want to be blessed. Hallelujah. I want to be set free. I don't want to carry this no more. Take it in the mighty name of Jesus. Set me free. And he showed up at the right time in my life. You want to know Palm Sunday reminds us that your king comes to you. Someone shout amen. Your king comes to you. He comes here the Sunday morning. He comes to you in all of your mess. For you to be free. That's the blessing that you and I have as believers in Christ. We are free. Free to worship. Free to praise Him. Free to live a life, hallelujah, in conviction and in holiness before the Lord. Without accusation, we are free. I'm free. I've never been more free in my life. I believe I can fly. I believe, hallelujah, I'm a soar like eagle's wings. If you need freedom this morning, Jesus has to offer it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And you want to be untied from the bondages, from the pain of your past. Jesus is here to set you free. Set you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First day I walked into a Sunday service. I sat right there in the corner. Everyone in the church knew the condition of, pa of Pastor Felipe's son. Remember I came in, hallelujah. Only a tight shirt, hallelujah, with the Jersey Shore back in the day, hallelujah. Ripped up, hallelujah, not because that was the style. Ears pierced and everything, mind all jacked up. And I remember when I heard the preacher preach that Jesus can set you free. I said, I can't let this opportunity pass me by. He, he said, come to the altar. I remember I came to the altar. I was trying to cover up the, the tears in my eyes. I don't want nobody to see me cry. Someone shout amen. <laughs> I don't want nobody to see me cry. 
I just got, you know, just a little something. I remember the Holy Spirit coming and touched me in such a supernatural way that I fell to my knees. Boogers all over my face. I was a hot mess. But I said, Lord, that this Sunday morning, I need you to set me free. I no longer want to live my life like this. I don't. I want you to heal me and restore me. I need you to heal the, the inside of my body, heal my mind, heal my emotions. Set me free in Jesus' name. And one thing that I've overlearned at that very moment, that Jesus came to me. Listen to me, hallelujah. The Bible says this. How many of you are being blessed this morning? The Bible says when the Pharisees were ready to stone the adulterous woman. Someone shout amen. You notice, listen, you notice how the man was nowhere in the picture. How many guys know it takes two to tango? Someone shout amen. But in that society, in that culture, hallelujah, women were considered less than dogs. Someone shout amen. And here comes Jesus, hallelujah. And he happens to show up at the right time. <laughs> How many here, hallelujah, you felt like you're about to get stoned? You feel like they're ready to throw that rock. The Bible says what Jesus did was he didn't stand over the woman. He got on his knees in the same eye level as this young woman. And he tells the Pharisees, though who hasn't sinned, hallelujah, throw the first stone. Someone shout amen. And you see rocks starting to fall. You know what Jesus tells me? He shows up at the right time. He says, my king comes to you. If you're tied up and you're in bondage, hallelujah. He says, my king comes to you. Why? Why? Why did he come to you? Why did he come to you, hallelujah? How many here are being blessed this morning? Matthew 21, 3. How many here are being blessed? 21, 3, it says, if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs him. Someone shout amen. Believe it or not, hallelujah, the change that will come in this world, amen, it, it doesn't matter who who's elected into office, who represents us, the change starts with the church. Someone shout amen. Who is the church? You and I. We are the assembly, the ecclesia. The gathering and the assembly, someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? So what needs to happen for change to come? He needs us. He needs you. You want to know why you need to be broken free, hallelujah, and set free? Because he needs you to reach your family. He needs you to reach your husband. He needs you to reach your wife in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone shout amen. I will listen to a testimony. <clears throat> How many here are being blessed this morning? Why do we need to be set free? I will listen to a testimony. It was a podcast, and in this podcast, this young brother, he's having struggles with believing in his faith. Someone shout amen. And he says, I'm going to be honest with you, as he struggled with, he says, I want to believe. He's crying. I want to love God. I want that freedom. But look what he says. He says, but you want to know what stops me? He says, what stops me is my whole life, my parents would take me to church. The Lord needs you. He says, my whole life, my father will take me to church. Someone shout amen. But in that same church parking lot, my father would go crazy and hit me and beat me. And tears were coming down. This man, I want to believe. But the same father who would bring me to church was the same one who abused me in the car parking lot and at home. Do you think that that father was free? No. No. Why am I telling you this? When I heard this story, I thought about it and said, the church needs freedom more than the world. Parents need freedom 
more than the world. Nowadays, we have parents, instead of going out and going to uh, uh, get to know their children, going out to a park, all the, the, the whole house is full of iPads and iPhones. No one's talking to each other. Someone shout amen. How's she, how's she doing? Let me give her a call. She's right down, uh, across the street. She's right at the other door. Someone shout amen. You don't think the church needs to be free? You don't think that father who beat his child who come to church every Sunday didn't need to be free? This is why we, this Sunday morning, we need freedom now more than the world. We need to be free from the bondages. We need to be free from the strongholds in our mind. We need to be free from our anger, from our bitterness. We need to be free from being double-minded. We need to be free from being lukewarm. The Bible says in the book of Revelations, you're either hot or you're cold. Hallelujah. I spit out those who are lukewarm. That's what the word of God says. Take it to the bank. We need to be free. The Lord is in need of us. He says, I need that donkey to be free because I need it. Someone shout amen. I need it to show the love of Jesus Christ. I need it to bring about change in the city of La Habra. I need to bring about change in your family. Hallelujah. Listen, you know what we need, church? We need healing. We need healing. Listen, you need healing. You need to ask God, God, heal my mind, heal my heart. Fill me with this word in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone shout amen. I remember I would come to church and I was still, hallelujah, in pain. But I said, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm going to fill myself with your word. And thank God I came one Sunday and I no longer felt that pain no more. He had healed me because he's a healer in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to set you free and I want to heal you and restore you from everything that was done to you in your past. I'm in need of that person in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, worship team. Isaiah 49, 8 to 10. How many are being blessed? It says... This is what the Lord says, at just the right time, I will respond to you. Tell your neighbor, at the right time. Listen, this is the right time for you, the Sunday morning. Someone shout amen. On the day of salvation, I will help you. I will protect you and give you to the people as my covenant with them. Though you, I will re through you, I will reestablish the land of Israel and assign it to his own people. I will say to the prisoners, come out in freedom, come out in freedom, come out in freedom. And to those in darkness, come into the light. They will be my sheep, grazing in the green pastures and on the hills that were previously bare. They will no longer hunger and thirst. The seer and sun will not reach them anymore. For the Lord in his mercy will lead them and he will lead them beside cool waters. He comes at the right time. Someone shout amen. Last point and we're done. If you're blessed, give a big round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Savior has come. Someone shout amen. Our Savior has come. The Hebrew word for Hosanna, hallelujah, means save us. Someone shout amen. The Hebrew word for Hosanna is save us. Save us. Yelling out, Hosanna, Hosanna. At the Sunday, day, Hosanna's the highest save us. It says, save us. Save me. The Bible says, those who call the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you need saving this morning from that bondage, from that bitterness, from that pain, from that life of sin, if you need saving, He's here to offer it for you. He's here to offer it for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give a big round of applause. Let's stand to our feet. Joel 2, 32. 
And if you, want, if you want me to pray with you this morning, I want you to come forward. I have a team of prayer for you. In fact, you want to know what? I want everybody to come forward this morning. Come, come. Because the Savior is here this Sunday morning in Jesus' mighty name. It says, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, they will be saved. For some on Mount Zion in Jerusalem will escape, just as the Lord has said. These will be amongst the survivors whom the Lord has called this morning in Jesus' mighty name. If you need to be untied this morning, I want you to close your eyes and raise your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Because I believe that Jesus is here this Sunday morning to set you free. Here on Palm Sunday in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, you don't have to be perfect for God to untie you this morning. But God promised to do so in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask God, those who help me to pray, hallelujah, come forward in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't want there to be no distractions this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you, hallelujah, this morning in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to start crying out to him in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Jesus, I need you to untie me. I need you to release me. I need you to come to me. I don't know what your petition may be this Sunday.